that's it. So, uh, your connection to Connecticut people are, are there's already people lining up in the parking lot and everything like that because <laughs> you used to live here. Yeah. So I, uh, tell us about the, the connection to Connecticut. Yeah, I, I moved out of uh, Louisiana and I moved up to Avon. Uh, my my parents, I wasn't, I was smoking funny things and drinking funny things down in Louisiana, and they thought it was best if I got a better education, so to speak. So I moved up to the Avon High School public school system. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was good times. A little bit of a, a weird transition because I was a hick from Louisiana, and nobody really understood what I was saying. Right. Probably still don't, but. Uh, and I moved back to Louisiana. I did another year in, of high school there, and then I finally said, all right, it's better up there. So, so you and came back to Connecticut, and they, your teachers must have hated you up here, huh? I don't think that they really understood what I was saying when I first got up here. I had a pretty thick accent, but uh, I went and saw a Warren Miller film, and I was like, hey, that's a cool sport. And then I went out to uh, ski sundown with some boys. Yeah. Got turned on to it, and, you know, just uh, got after it and really fell in love with skiing. And at the same time, uh, Right around when I was 17, I picked up an acoustic guitar and started playing. So you're still doing the, the whole skiing thing. I was gonna I was gonna ask you about sundown too, because there's probably not a lot of places to go skiing down in Louisiana, right? No, you can go water skiing with the Gators. It's not so bad. Water skiing? Water skiing. Did you do that? Oh, yeah. I yeah. grew up water skiing and doing courses and stuff like that. Okay, so then you're like, uh, you know, this is snow. It's just, it's the same thing. It's but balanced, just cold. to be honest with you. It's just like, you know, I always used to do flips and everything, and jump yeah. off the highest stuff you could find. Yeah. Came up here and just started doing it on snow. So, so you, you went to ski sundown and off the air we were talking. You said that you, you started doing some hitchhiking. Yeah, I, I, started, I met some crew up in uh, Killington, Vermont. I, my senior year, I started hitchhiking up there. Yeah. And I thought I was going to go to school, and I got into uh, Castleton State College, but I ended up studying freestyle skiing and took a job as a bar back at the Wobbly Barn, and I worked every night, and I skied every day. And That's so funny, away. I go up there all the time, dude. Go Do you the... remember the Wobbly Barn? Though? It's still there. You can't <laughs> oh, I, <know>. <laughs> yeah. I just know a lot of people that go there but don't really yeah. remember it. Remember <laughs> it from, like, what, three months ago? <laughs> So, oh, that's pretty cool, man. And then, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, the whole thing with uh, Killington. Did you get when you were you were uh, playing guitar and everything like that? Did you ever do any shows up at Wobbly Barn or no? No, but the first guitar, actually, real guitar, you know, I guess I would say, uh, was given to me by the acoustic duo Sean and Jamie, and I know Jamie plays around here all the time. Yeah, man, those guys still play out a lot. And I lived right across the street, and they actually gave me my first guitar that, like, plugged in, a real guitar. The other one sounded, you know, I think everybody, they just wanted to make me stop playing that guitar. Yeah. So, uh, and he's a local boy from around here, and I ran into him not too long ago, and he's like, dude, I heard you on the radio, that's awesome. And it's good that things come full circle, you know, kind yeah. of reconnect around here. So, uh, tell us a little bit about how your uh, ski career ended up taking off. Um, probably the biggest thing is, I mean, I was on the Killington Pro Mogul team, and then we went on the Pro Mogul tour, and then the whole new school aerials uh, came around, and uh, I had gone over to Europe to compete, and uh, I won an X Games qualifier over there, which qualified me to compete over here, and, you know, I got picked up by Solomon, then I switched over to Fisher for a few years, and then just recently... Uh, after a long time, I started. I made a bunch of films in Europe, and I signed with the Vocal International team, and they dig the music. And now, you know, if you if you go to our BlackSunshineBand.com, you'll see the new video. It's got all stuff from like three or four different films. But yeah, we the, posted that up on our uh, on our Facebook page yeah. on WCCC.com. Yeah, so thanks. No, but honestly, it's, it's, if you look at the guitar that I'm playing, it looks exactly like the graphic on the ski. Yeah. So we kind of teamed up with music and skiing, and then we auctioned off the guitar and gave it all away to charity. So it's kind of cool the synergy that we got with all the people that I work with, and I've got same sponsors for a long time. So and they for, dig it. For those of you who are, who are just tuning in, we're talking to uh, Matt Reardon on the Rock 106.9 WCCC. He's the singer and plays guitar for the band Black Sunshine. And uh, the sponsorships that you're talking about, you, you have like multiple sponsorships because uh, for those of you who don't know, Matt's an extreme skier. I mean like crazy stuff that you see in Warren Miller films, like really insane <laughs> stuff. Like I like to go snowboarding, dude, and when I hit like a three foot jump, I'm like, holy crap, did you see that? And that for you, you're like, dude, I, I won't even hit that because it's too small. You know what I mean? So but you have the sponsorships for the skiing, but you also have sponsorships now because you're in a band, right? Yeah, I just got endorsed by Yamaha Guitars. That is the best thing ever. Yeah, I remember getting my first pair of skis, but getting yeah. a getting a badass. Can I say badass? Sure you can. Okay, a badass uh, free guitar. So <laughs> I'm, I'm actually playing it right now. I see that thing. That's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So did, did you uh, 
think that when you know when you got locked in to skiing and you started getting sponsorships and you started uh, you know doing all these like big ski films and stuff like that, is that what you wanted to do for your career? You know, I had a bucket list of things, but I, I had started to write music for other people and started to like submit for films and writing soundtracks, like just instrumentals. And one day this guy goes, hey, you you know, you might want to look into that because that has some longevity in it. You know, you can't jump off 100 foot cliffs for the rest of your life. Yeah. And, you know, I think I'm like 50 soundtracks in and this last year I won an award at the Sundance Film Festival for... I worked on a score with the Vienna Orchestra, and we wrote the original pieces for a film that won the best documentary. So it kind of started with like one little tiny film, and then knowing a pro motocross bike rider who was doing a movie, and submitted for him, and surf films, and snowboard films, and you know, there, there's just been umpteen different you know opportunities that you get it out there. And never, honestly, once I made the decision to go full time this is a full-time gig to yeah. make it go like this right so you're right. a lucky son of a bitch because the like the two things that you love doing in life the most skiing and playing music it's I mean, funny the harder i work the luckier i get yeah <laughs> i've heard that before <laughs> tell us about yeah, you were in an accident man and it was a it was a severe accident and it changed everything for you Actually, the accident wasn't so so horrific. It was uh, going in the hospital, and if you know what a staph infection is, I was down in New Zealand competing at an invitation on it, just launched into the into the competition phase with a double backflip, and I tore my meniscus. And then when I flew back to France, where I was living, I was living in a small village in France, and I went into this dirty French hospital. And I should have known they were smoking cigarettes and there was a poodle in my room. So, And somehow I ended up with a staph infection. And literally a month later I had to go back in and they said you have a severe problem. And they said we're going to open you up and clean you out. And staph can kill you quick. So they finally kind of localized it. And I mean they were talking about cutting my leg off. I and mean, if it goes any further then that strain of staph can kill you. So I was just kind of dumbfounded and they were all speaking to me in a funny language. And... Uh, Luckily, it worked and kind of beat that. But during that time is when I seriously kind of sat back and I said, whoa, I need to figure it out. And uh, I went just full blast and went out to uh, Hollywood. And um, I had my dream producer in mind. That was Bob Marlette because I'd heard all this stuff. From Black Sabbath to Leonard Skinner to Shine Down and Saliva, Seether, all the S bands. Huge producer you got, Hotel. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I went and knocked on his door and kind of how I did it with my ski sponsors, just, you know, when opportunity does not kick in a door. And uh, he was cool. He kind of dug that. And uh, we did it as a development basis and ended up uh, cutting a pretty cool rock and roll album. Nice, man. Well, let's